Clinical features of pregnancy include amenorrhea, breast tenderness, nausea, and urinary frequency. It can be confirmed with urine or serum beta HCG, which is positive in both intrauterine and extrauterine pregnancy. So how do you differentiate between intrauterine and extrauterine pregnancy? Through clinical evaluation and ultrasound, clinical features of intrauterine pregnancy include a uterus that is appropriately sized for gestational age, absence of pain or bleeding, and auscultation of the fetal heart. These findings can also be confirmed by ultrasound. Upon confirmation, ideally before the second missed period, take a full history, perform a physical examination, conduct a screening test, and identify high-risk patients requiring referral. In this video, we will cover how to perform the abdominal examination in pregnant patients, and is made up of four main steps. History, preparation, general examination, and abdominal examination. The abdominal examination is then further divided into inspection, palpation, and fetal auscultation. History, ensure to obtain a medical history, obstetric history, family history, and social history. On medical history, ask about known conditions, medications, and allergies, as well as symptoms relating to discharge, bleeding, or dysuria. Obstetric history taking includes the number of pregnancies, gravidity, and deliveries, parity. Ensure to document mode of delivery, outcomes, and complications for each pregnancy. And finally, when taking the social history, inquire about the patient's domestic circumstances, whether the pregnancy was planned, their marital status, and any use of smoking, alcohol, or substances. Ensure all of this is documented into the maternal health record and ensure to calculate the BMI. Preparation. Obtain patient consent to perform the examination and prepare all your equipment. Your equipment would include a urine dipstick, stethoscope, sphygmomanometer, measuring tape, pinned stethoscope, and ultrasound machine, if indicated. Finally, wash your hands. General examination. Measure the patient's vitals. These include the blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and temperature if indicated. Look for any signs of pain or distress and conduct a thorough head-to-toe examination. Key signs to observe include conjunctival pallor, melasma on the face, irregular, enlarged, or nodular thyroid, as well as edema and varicose veins in the legs. Perform a brief screening cardiovascular and respiratory examination and look for any abnormalities. Abdominal examination. The abdominal examination is then further divided into inspection, palpation, and fetal auscultation. Inspection. Look for previous caesarean scars or abdominal surgery related scars. Skin changes relating to pregnancy you may observe include striae gravidarum, striae albicans, and linea nigra. Palpation. The uterus is palpable at the pubic symphysis from 12 weeks and is generally at the level of the umbilicus and xiphi sternum at 20 and 36 weeks respectively. From 20 weeks, the SFH, symphysis fundal height, measurement from the pubic symphysis to uterine fundus correlates with the gestational age. From 24 weeks, generally feel, for any fetal movements, abdominal tenderness or guarding, then palpate the gravid abdomen. From 34 weeks, determine the fetal lie, fetal presentation, and level of engagement using the four Leopold's maneuvers. The first being fundal grip, to palpate the fundus, and to palpate the contents of the fundus and measure the symphysis fundal height. The second Pold's maneuver, lateral grip, is to palpate for the fetal back. The third, Paulic's grip, to determine the presenting part and its mobility. The fourth, deep pelvic grip, to determine the size, nature and mobility of the presenting part. Auscultation, 12 to 14 weeks on Doppler, and 22 to 24 weeks using a pinard stethoscope. Once your examination is complete, document all your findings and make a clinical assessment. In your assessment, evaluate the risk to your patients, as this will determine their appropriate level of care. All patients with danger signs, such as severe pain, bleeding, maternal illness or an abnormal fetal heart rate must be referred.